Imagine with me, if you will, walking into your garage and on the shelf, you see a box labeled Broken Dreams and you take that box off the shelf and in that box are all your dad's pedals and patch cables just clustered in a big sad heap. You dump them on the floor and you ask yourself, how am I supposed to hook this up? In what order am I supposed to put these pedals in? A wave of dread and fear washes over you as you think to yourself, what if I do it wrong? So today Addison's gonna come help me and help you. And help you. With the problem that is pedal order and we are going to hopefully lift the weight of the rules and uh, stuff. Yep. I think we've gone on way too, we should way too. Probably we should get probably into just it. start it. Okay, roll the intro. So I've enlisted the help of Addison, the biggest giantest pedal nerd that I know, to dive into the subject of pedal order and uncover its mysteries and yep. potentially break a bunch of the rules. So Addison, can you explain to me what is the purpose of pedal order? The proper pedal order, we'll put it in quotes, right. is created to give pedals their best chance at behaving like they were supposed to behave. It's kind of like sending your kids to like community college right. or something. It's like putting pedals in the proper order, like sets them up to, to get their dream job Dang. or something like that, right? I don't know, something like that? Yeah. So explain the traditional, basic kind of overarching, well-accepted pedal order that we sort of like yeah. all know about. There's kind of one major, uh, I guess you could call it standard. We'll go standard. Okay. Within this standard, there's a few different uh, places to break the rules. We have fuzz first, then we have univibe, then we have wah. Okay. Compression, pitch shifting like a micro pog. Okay. All right, we've got overdrive, distortion. Maybe you could put a big muff here. And then we go modulation like trim, chorus, vibrato, et cetera. Delay, reverb, amp. That's kind cool. of the traditional. Yeah. Yep. So is that like hard line mm -hmm. or where are places that those rules are typically broken yeah. by people? Well, a big one, uh, myself included, is modulation. Uh, a lot of people like modulation after their overdrives and distortions. Okay. I tend to prefer mine before those things. Although today, I don't know. Maybe maybe we'll hear some stuff that'll change my mind. So let's start at the beginning of a yep. typical pedal chain. We've got fuzz. Why is fuzz at the beginning? Fuzz is the needy circuit of pedals. Okay. It's old technology, it's primitive, right? right? So fuzz didn't imagine having 400 other glorious friends. 400 other brothers and sisters exactly. to share mommy the guitar. <laughs> right. And yes. it just wants it Just wants all attention. the attention. Got it's it, exactly. okay, cool. So today, we're gonna use the fuzz face here. We've heard Josh talk about impedance, fuzz face, pickups, right. all that stuff. That's the technical why. We're not gonna get into it today. But uh, we're gonna use this. We're gonna throw it at the beginning of the chain. We're gonna kind of demonstrate some stuff. What, what if we what? did it though at the end? I don't wanna do that. I think it needs to go at the beginning where it's supposed to go. What if we weren't total babies about it and we just tried stuff? Just, just, just your frickin' funeral. Let's do it. So I admit you were right. That sounded really bad. It yep. was really squealy. Yep. It was really sputtery. Yep. There was a lot of noise. It didn't want to be there. It was like it was throwing a tantrum. If you want a sputtery fuzz, there's fuzzes that there exist are fuzzes that, that are sputtery. Do that. You yeah. don't need to put it at the end of your chain. Yeah, yeah. So let's put it back at the beginning of the chain yeah. and jam on it like, like the good Lord intended. Like a normal person would do. Yeah. Well, that was a raucousy jam that was I enjoyed. It Me was too. fun. Um, next, we have Univibe. Right. And Univibe is 
very similar to Fuzz in that it right. is an older technology. So again, it's kind of like the second born child. Mm. So it's like, I want Got to it. be uh, close to the mommy guitar. Right. And so, yeah, but I don't think we're going to mess around with that one today. Nope. Um, we'll next it. is compression. Yep. Yeah, this is a great one uh, from Keeley. We're not going to play it today. Okay. However, I do want to say this. Compression, there's kind of two schools of thought here. Uh, before overdrive and distortion, that's where most people put it that I've seen. Gotcha. If you put it after your overdrive and distortion, say you have something that's like really touch sensitive, uh, analog man king of tone. Mm -hmm. Love that pedal, very dynamic. You put it after, you're going to retain that touch sensitivity of the overdrive. Got it. Right? So cool. before is going to sort of squash your dynamic a little bit. After will allow you to retain that touch sensitivity of your drive pedal. Oh, very cool. Yep. Awesome. And then after that would be um, pitch effects. That's one that can kind of like kind of varies depending on it does your the time of day, it, maybe. I would agree with that. Um, like morning time, probably right. at the beginning yes. of the board, maybe yep. like night time. Like, yep. I don't know, like later. Later, yeah. maybe just throw in like the effects loop of your amp or something and be yeah. like a crazy person. Honestly, that would be kind of cool. That'd be sweet. That'd be sort of cool. Pitch, we're gonna also move on, but we're gonna use the pog later. Let's go to overdrive next. Yeah. Now, cause there's a lot of space mm -hmm. for switching yep. and swapping. Yeah, there is. How do you like yeah. to stack your overdrive and distortion? Another way to look at it is putting high gain to low gain. So okay. I'm in the, the camp of high gain to low gain. So for me, that would mean typically distortion before overdrive. Sure. Now our boy Josh, yeah, he's different. He's the other way around. Sweet Josh. Our sweet Josh. He likes overdrive before distortion. Okay. Yeah. So we have an example of both. Yeah. Um, we're going to use the rat yep. for our distortion, the trusty old Proco rat. Love Can't it. Can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. Um, and the mini tube screamer from Ibanez. Let's listen. Mm -hmm to distortion before overdrive, yep. and then let's listen to distortion after overdrive so that we have kind of an idea of what we're dealing with here. Love it. Roll the clip. I think I liked um, Overdrive after Distortion. I kind of like how it cut and it felt really good. So now we have something in common. Yeah, not today. Really? Yeah, I actually liked it the other way around, believe it or not. Which brings up a really good point. Okay. Whatever you have at the very end of your chain, that's the shape, color, form that the rest of your flavors, right, are gonna take on. Okay. So that's a good note to keep in mind. And today, I liked the rat flavor. <sighs> Ew. Gross. After the overdrive flavor. Just like for the record, Addison did say he liked the rat flavor. I did say that. Well, and, and what lesson did we learn from this? Honestly, bro, sometimes you gotta just, just go. So which one should we jam on? Uh, I think we should do the one that I liked today, not the one I usually do, and okay. that's overdrive into distortion. That'd be tube screamer into rat. That's the, the one I think we should jam on. Cool, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> So the next section we're gonna look at is modulation. The cool thing about modulation is it's kind of like a it's kind of like a family within the family. Right. It, you know, you've got tremolo, you've got chorus, yep. you've got phaser, yep. flanger, flanger, all kinds of stuff. Yep. It's amazing. Today we're just gonna focus on tremolo. Usually, before delays, mm -hmm. before reverbs, yep. as far as pedals go. Right. You know, like. Back in the day, and sometimes now, mm -hmm. people you know use their amp trim, mm -hmm. so that would be kind of at the end of the signal chain. Mm -hmm. Let's try, like we did with the overdrives, let's try trim before mm -hmm. and trim after delay and reverb. Throw it all the way at the end, all the way, and just see. Getting crazy. Getting nuts. Nutso. <laughs> Really 
liked it at the end. Okay. It's like weird and yeah. goopy and compressy. Like yeah. the way it felt playing yeah, was yeah. like super strange, okay. but I really liked it. Okay. So I think we're gonna put it at the end and we're gonna jam on it. Dang, okay. And you know why? Okay. Why? Because sometimes you gotta yes, yes, yes. Like awesome Space Cowboy theme music, That's and great. I would watch a movie with that soundtrack. All right, so next we have delay. Awesome. Now the the typical place to put delay is before reverb, and kind of after like modulation, overdrive, towards the end of your chain. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because that makes sense. Maybe we could look at delay as more of like a mature effect in exactly. the sense that like it really can stand on its own and it doesn't yep. need its mommy so much. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So today we're gonna use the mature El Capi stand from Strymon. Wonderful. Yep. So let's try it before reverb and after distortion. Yep. But then let's also try it before the brown amplifications T4. <laughs> because it's always good to yes, yes, yes. I think we know which option we're gonna go with. It's an obvious answer. Obvious. Yes. We're gonna do delay before overdrive. That's not where I normally put it on my pedal board. No, but I love it. It's I love it. Wild and shoegazy, yep. so let's jam on it. Let's go. out of control. That was it was stellar. I also, I threw this on in the middle of the jam. I know, I loved yeah. it. It made it more better. All right, last but not least is reverb. Yep. A lot of times people are throwing these reverbs at the end of their board because they want a pure wave of verb, yep. you know, washing into the into the ether sphere, right. so to speak. Nailed it. As if like a wave is washing upon the shore, mm -hmm. you know, clean and free of debris. Yep. If you put it at the beginning, it's yeah. like a it's like a tsunami right. carrying debris of of a small beach town, oh you know, gosh. through and that that's not good. No. But we don't want that. Um, today I'm gonna use the Hall of Fame 2, yep. DC Electronics. TC Electronic. Oh, that's right. There's no S. Say it right. There's no S. I was thinking that maybe we could just throw it at the beginning. Please don't do just that. Just for fun. Nope. Can we do it? No. We're gonna do it. Please listen to me. Don't do it. We're gonna do it. Stop. Just try stuff! Yes, yes, yes.
So what did we learn from today? We learned that there are some rules, right? There are definitely There are rules. some things that help set up our pedals right. to do their job as well. Yep. However, it's really important to... Yes, yes, yes. If you're sitting at home with a pile of pedals and some patch cables, you're thinking to yourself, man, I don't know what to do. Am I gonna do it right? Am I gonna do it wrong? Just remember, there are a billion combinations that we didn't even touch on. We skipped That's a right. whole portion of the board today because we were lazy. You know what? We skipped wah. We skipped wah. Is anyone out there using a wah pedal? No. Yeah. <laughs> Freaking throw your wah at the end. That's throw right. it in the middle. Don't be afraid. Don't be, look at me. Don't be a baby. Don't be a baby. All right? Don't be a baby. Just live for once. Let's go to record time. On today's record time, we bring to you two albums because there's two of us here today. Addison, what did you um, pick? I pick U2, All That You Can't Leave Behind. Wonderful. This is my favorite U2 record. It's amazing. The Edge is on it. That's why I picked it. The Edge. He is the master of guitar effects. Yeah. I guarantee you he spent years trying different orders of guitar effects. Did he just try, try stuff? Yes, yes, yes. I love uh, stuck in a moment you can't get out. Elevation, that riff, oh, amazing. Yeah. Kite is on here. Come on, what else is on it? New York is on it, Peace on Earth. It's It's so, got some of the best hits, in my opinion, yeah. of any two. You, any U2 record. Words is hard. Words is hard. Um, I picked Deep Sea Divers, Impossible Weight. Okay. Um, Jess, Jessica yep. Dobson uh, is lead singer songwriter, yep. guitar player, and she is just like some cool or yeah. unorthodox yeah. things with her pedals. Um, we filmed with her last year, I believe. Yep. Um, there's and, an episode about yeah, it. Yeah, there's an episode about it. Go check it out, it's really cool. Go check it out. Um, we go through um, Jess's pedal chain and she does some like really cool stuff with Tremlo and weird places and uh, yeah, she's a guitar hero of mine. I think she's incredibly talented. Um, the song that the album's titled after, yeah. Impossible Weight, yeah. is a fantastic track. Nice. Just go listen to it. Um, your, your ears will be blessed with really awesome guitar tones. Thank you everybody for watching. This was really fun. It was kind of cool to establish some like groundwork, yeah. some framework yeah. for how pedals should yeah. be put in order, and then to completely break those rules yeah. or adjust those rules. Yeah. Um, I know yeah. I enjoyed it because there are some things I learned today that I'm thinking I'm going to go home and oh, try I my know. own pedal board. The problem is, is now we've given you more reasons to buy more pedals. <laughs> exactly. So thank you so much for watching again. Um, if you liked the episode, hit like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to get notified every time we drop a new episode. You can check out the jams from this episode on our BandLab account. You can literally download the stems and jam along. You could remix them. You could make like a like a sweet like chill beats like mashup thing or whatever. I don't know. Whatever you want to do. We also have a Patreon account where you can get access to exclusive giveaways, content, all kinds of different goodies. It's pretty amazing. It is. We it's, just rebooted it. We just Patreon. rebooted it. Yep. You should check it out. It's amazing. Go see um, the new tiers. Yeah, there's new tiers. Not bad tiers. Nope. Good tiers. Good tiers. Patreon tiers. Patreon tiers. Um, I think that's it. That's it. I think we can move on. I think so too. Bye everyone. Thank you. Bye.